well, it, it is six fifty nine. I think I think we still have a minute, but I would say get yes. get get some something to write on and with because we're going to be getting some information that will probably be very valuable to us all. <clears throat> Got to unmute. Yeah, so for the for the benefit of those on YouTube, we are in the pre-meeting portion for the next minute. Tina, you, I interrupted you. I know I was. I wanted to check that you were here. <laughs> I am here. Oh, I believe I am here. Uh, Mitch or Tina, how how long do I have to uh, speak today? Um, it should be about ten minutes. Ten minutes. Yeah. Uh, I think my notes right. Everything is ready. Well, I've got seven o'clock, so let's call this to order. Um, welcome, right. everybody, for the. Uh, sorry. Do you want to do something, Mitch? Oh, no. oh yeah, yeah. I thought you. I was like, uh, all right, you're taking over now. I'll okay. hang out. Um, hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna mute everyone now. So goodbye, voices. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm gonna press one more button here and then we're gonna get started. That sort of worked. All right, thanks for taking the time to join us this evening for our September meeting of the La Mesa Foothills Democratic Club. It's Wednesday, September 2nd, 2020, and we have 62 days until election day. Tonight, we're gonna to help you make that election, help you help make that election a blue wave, not just for the US, but here locally in San Diego County which is one of the last Republican strongholds in the state, um, San Diego East County in particular. I am Mitch Wagner. I am the board member for communications and social media for the La Mesa Foothills Democratic Club. I have been called the Zoom master. Um, we have another great lineup of speakers tonight, so I wanna get started fast, but first, before I do some housekeeping, we will have opportunities for Q&A. Please send a private message to me on the chat channel or click the raise hand button on your Zoom controls or uh, talk to, uh, send a message to Evelyn Andrade or Katie Segetti or another board member. In other words, if you have a question, get my attention in any way that you can. Um, as before, we are streaming this on our YouTube channel. So if you have friends or family who can't make it tonight on Zoom or you experience technical difficulties and you have to leave us, you can watch on the YouTube channel, just search for La Mesa Foothills Democratic Club on YouTube and you'll find us right there. Um, and if you have anything else you need to bring to my attention or you notice any technical problem or anybody disrupting the meeting, please message either of either of two of my board colleagues, Evelyn Andrade and Katie Segetti. So let's get going. I'm gonna start this meeting by hearing from uh, club president, Tina Reinberg, who you just heard from a minute ago. Uh, take it away, Madam President. I'm going to unmute you now. Hi, I, Mitch stole my lines. I was going to just remind you how many days left until the election. Um, welcome. Um, th these are the times when we, we can still st stick together, even though we're apart. Um, we're united. We have a common enemy, and it's nobody in this room. <laughs> And um, so uh, let's keep our eye on the prize and, and wake up the day after the election knowing we've done everything we could. Um, that's, that's really all we can ever do. And if we did everything we could and we're satisfied with the job we did, then we have to be satisfied with the results. Um, and at least in California, we generally tend to do pretty well because we have a stupidity firewall that apparently <laughs> lives at our borders um, that keeps most of the stupid at least at bay. Um, anyway, um, thank you for being here. And let's keep asking each other questions and keep dialogues going. Um, and I'm always available if you have a question or a problem. I'm going to uh, fight hard for GO Team this year and walk my precinct, um, socially distant, but I'm going to do it. So um, if any of you have any problems or questions about that, hit me up um, now or, or whenever. And uh, let's just Keep going, 62 more days, Mitch. Six, six, it, it's, it's coming and, and the, the early voting will start even sooner. Right now, I'm going to introduce the mom of our club and my political mom, uh, Linda Armacost, who will talk to us about whatever she decides to talk to us about. <laughs> I'm gonna unmute Linda now. 
Um, I think that's right, Linda. Yes, it was. Right. Linda, uh, you need to unmute yourself and then speak. Okay. Did I unmute myself? Yes, you did. All right. All right. Welcome, everybody. I wish I could give you all a big hug when this is over. I am so hug deprived. Uh, we're just going to go to it. So um, I usually review the last month, and this last month seemed like a freaking year. Um, so just briefly, we had several big events. The first was the DNC convention for Zoom. I thought it was great. I thought they did a wonderful job. I loved um, having people from 50 states sing the national anthem. I loved the roll call of states was better than any convention. The guy with the calamari, I mean, it was wonderful. Um, <clears throat> that they had hosts. I thought they did a really, really good job. And the little boy doing the Pledge of Allegiance the last day. Ugh. So I cried, I laughed, it was inspirational. Michelle Obama was mwah, magnificent, of course. And President Obama, I still call him president, um, standing there in Constitution Hall, pleading with us, pleading, please, please save our country, save our constitution. Um, Joe Biden was great and <clears throat> Kamala introduced herself. We know her out here, but other folks didn't. And I thought Joe Biden gave probably the best speech I've heard him give, and I've heard a lot of his speeches. So we ended it, it was great. It, it looked like America. It looked like us. Then we get the RNC, which for some reason seemed to be hosted in some sort of hall of flags. Uh, not sure where, but uh, the... The gal who screamed, Gilfoy, whatever her name was, she was married to Gavin Newsom, go figure. Uh, but at any rate, she screamed. And then every other speaker was named Trump. Uh, Don Jr., they say, when they go low, he got really, really high. Um, <clears throat> and then we had, oh my God, we had Melania, who first of all was in the Rose Garden which she obliterated, I mean, she dug up roses that first ladies had planted since 1913. So she was wearing her best Eva Brown outfit or maybe Mrs. Putin outfit, I don't know. And blah, 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 the new book coming out. Of course, we know she's just as bad as Trump. She turns her back on her best friends and she's just not, she's bad, she's bad. Then. We get King Donald and they come descending down the steps where the uh, not socially distanced idiots are all sitting and he drones on for 70 men. It was awful. The, per the promiscuous use of the White House for, you know, the naturalization and the pardon. It was just reprehensible, disgusting, awful. But it worked. It worked. They did get the, the gap is narrowing. But what they did is they fed dog whistle red meat to their supporters and boy, are they energized. They are fired up and they're bold. They're much bolder than they were before. Look what happened. You've got them supporting a 17 year old domestic terrorist who shot people. Um, and now they're even bolder. If you remember the Black Lives Matter, which the support is dwindling, unfortunately, because they pivoted to law and order. <clears throat> but it used to be they would outside agitators and they would do the looting and the burning and they blame it. Now they just come in with their trucks. Boom, trucks with paintballs and pepper spray. And so they're like, here we are, come, come get us. And what's disturbing about that is that unlike, unfortunately, we Dems, the Republicans do have something going on. And it comes from probably the most one of the most deplorable people ever to hold the presidency, and that was Ronald Reagan. He destroyed the middle class. I mean, we know what he did. But he said he came up with the 11th commandment, you shall not speak ill of another Republican. And so they, you know, they'll go ahead and support, obviously, the freak in the White House, but they'll do it because why? Because they want to win. They know that without winning, they don't get anything done. So they stick together. Now we Dems, we wanna win. Um, like Tina said, we're gonna have 
um, all kinds of information on how you can vote, how you could get other people to vote, to get out the vote, and that's great. But right here, we've got some dem on dem stuff going on that really disturbs me. Um, now, our whoever thought of this primary system we have, the jungle, I don't know what they call it. They should be thrown off a bridge, whoever did that. But so we've got baked in dem on dem violence already. And our club said, no, we're not going to do that. We're just, you know, we're not going to pick favorites, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> and, you know, so that's, it is what it is with that. So we're going to have dem on dem stuff. However, you've got other groups who are, they're promoting purity tests, okay? If you're not exactly aligned with us, by God, you're a racist, you're an anti-Semite. It's like, my, our group's goal is homes for the homeless homing pigeons. And if you don't support us, you are anti-avian. You are a birdist and we'll have nothing to do with you. Well, come on, we gotta get over that. So, you know, if you don't stand with every single little bitty thing that this candidate or this group stands for, get over it, stop it, get together. It's about winning. You could have the greatest plan for whatever. I'm gonna save fill in the blank. If you don't get elected, your great idea ain't worth squat. You gotta get elected, you've gotta win. You gotta win, win, win. So what do we do? We need to support and recruit, and we've been doing good candidates, and we need candidates who want to win. We need candidates who understand that they need to know their win number, that they need to raise funds, you know, that they need to do all these things in order to win. So we have candidates here tonight who've done a great job, but I'm gonna use Colin, if you don't mind, as an example, now I'm not talking about school board and stuff because then you, you do have to raise money and you do have to have friends and you do need to get the word out. But let's say you're at the city council or you know board level of some sort. Now Colin, I hope you don't mind, but at his fundraiser, he said he raised like over $75,000, right? And knocked on between himself and volunteers, 30,000 doors, 30,000 doors of Mesa. They sent out countless mailers. Many of us remember sitting in the campaign office and we had mailers to Republicans, mailers to older, you know, anyway, huge, brilliantly done campaign. And it came in second, okay? It came in second after all that. So in order to win, you've got to put out and you've got to treat it like you're serious about it. So <clears throat> I encourage everyone, one, to support our candidates already. And, you know, those who are thinking about running, there's support, we will help you with fundraisers, we'll do whatever it takes, but you've got to take the lead, you've got to understand what it takes to win. And one of the most critical things is knowing your win number. How many votes do I need to win? So I won't belabor that because I know Chris and other political strategists are uh, much better at that. So I guess my call is let's drop, put our egos in the vault turn our attention to winning, winning and supporting Democrats and getting this country back. Absolutely. So uh, I know we're going to talk later about, and we did before about like uh, Defendees County. And, and you know, we got people out here who are scary and we need to band together and we need to support everybody. So um, a good speaker would end with a joke. I don't have a joke. But I do want to thank you, and I miss you all so much, and I can't wait till we're back at the community center and having a good time. So thank you all. Well, thank you, Linda. Good to hear from you again um, after a bit of an absence from uh, speaking at our meetings. Um, we are going to go next to uh, Sean Quintel. I, I mispronounce everybody's last names. That's a tradition for me. But Sean is uh, a board member, a valued board member, and he's going to talk about the California ballot initiatives. So I'm going to unmute you now, Sean, and take it away, sir. There we go. Good evening, everyone. As we did last month, we'll go through uh, kind of half of the propositions on the statewide ballot. 
uh, we'll go through the ones we support first and uh, save the ones that uh, the parties opposed uh, for the last. Today, um, we'll have a recap at the very end. This is only gonna be like five minutes and we'll go through all the propositions just to see the yeses and the nos. Uh, again, to spare you from having to wade through the tiny font on the state ballot initiative. Um, let's get this open. You, uh, everyone can see the PowerPoint, I presume. Uh, the first we'll talk about tonight is uh, Proposition 14. That's uh, for stem cell research initiative. Um, about 16 years ago, uh, voters passed this and they created a statewide initiative for this to fund uh, stem cell research and its application to various maladies. The, uh, that was worth about $3 billion in bonds. That's almost been uh, spent entirely. So this is this would authorize borrowing another 5.5 billion. Uh, the programs administered through the UC system largely, and I, I don't think there's really any organized proposition to this, and there really shouldn't be because it's. I think most people would say it's been unqualified success. Uh, proposition 23 is sort of a do-over. It, it was the second version of a proposition that was on the ballot in 2018. And it's about the regulation of dialysis clinics. Uh, as you'll see here, 600 dialysis clinics in the whole state, there's 80,000 folks that need to be dialyzed. Consequently, they're open really long hours, six days a week. It's uh, really onerous on the people that work there and rightly so the healthcare workers for the second time now have gotten something on the ballot here. Um, this is less uh, expansive than the 2018 effort was. Um, and really, it's pretty basic. I mean, they require that there be a physician on site all the time, the places are open, uh, and that the folks that are on Medi-Cal or Medicare get the same kind of treatment that everybody else does, and that these clinics uh, have some degree of uh, more answerability to the Department of Public Health to report infections uh, and, and that sort of thing. Um, and as you can tell with a lot of these things, you can tell by who's for it and who's against it, by who's spending the money. Uh, two dialysis companies own a lion's share of these clinics in the state, and they spend a ton of money in 18, and they're spending more money this time to defeat it. So the party position is to support Proposition 23. Proposition 19 uh, is uh, about property tax transfers. And in effect, uh, this was added by the legislature, by the way, this wasn't a voter initiative. Uh, if it approves, folks that uh, Californians that own homes that are 55 and older can buy new homes, but they keep their property taxes at the same or depending on the circumstances, slightly less than that. Uh, there's also a provision in there if uh, homeowners in that demographic slice lose their home to a wildfire, they're more protected by funds in this too. Another part of this and how it becomes end up being revenue revenue positive instead of uh, just a reduction in taxes is that it tracks down, cracks down rather on these property transfers from uh, parents to adult children. And there are a lot of sort of sensationalistic stories about Hollywood celebrities and tech billionaires. They sell a house and they give it to their kids and the kids just rent the house uh, and they make far more money than, they, than their rent costs because they're under the Prop 13 sort of taxes. So it cracks down on that, which presumably is projected to make it revenue positive, and those increased revenues are supposed to go to the uh, wildfire fund. Uh, Proposition 21 is um, also something that they're taking another crack at after they did unsuccessfully so in 2018. Uh, and essentially, it, uh, if it passes, cities and counties can impose uh, rent control on properties that um, or more than 15 years old, except for how you live in or a single family home. Uh, in a way they aren't now, uh, cities and counties could then be able to impose rent control increase limits anytime a renter moves out. So who's ever living there now would be fine, but as soon as that person moves out at that point, if this property is over 15 years old, then the city or county could say, okay, only, you can only increase rent on this person going forward by X percentage. 
and uh, affordable housing is an enormous crisis. So the party's behind that too. Uh, and uh, finally today, it's the big ticket item for the state, it's uh, Prop 22, which is uh, an attempt to undo or reverse AB5, which our own Lorena Gonzalez championed. And as we all know, that is an effort to require uh, gig companies, those big corporations, to treat their employees with a modicum of decency and respect and rights. Uh, it's a big blunt instrument. And uh, in the legislative process to date, there have been certain carve outs for other kinds of industries uh, that will fall under this general uh, umbrella. I, the second bullet point here I put in quotes because it was a subject of a court action this week and a San Francisco Superior Judge just ruled on this two days ago because Uber and Lyft took them to court. This language here is what Javier Becerra put on the ballot pamphlet that gets sent out to everybody. And Uber and Lyft were saying that's unfair. And the judge looks at it and says, dude, it says exactly what the proposition is supposed to do. How is it not fair? But as you can see, the amount of money being spent, Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, Postmates, Instacart, it's well over $110 million. The Uber CEOs have said, we're going to spend whatever it takes to defeat this. And uh, they're not stupid, but they know that if this isn't reversed, that they'll have to change business in such a way that the people who work for them in these delivery and ride hail companies uh, are at least uh, privileged to some of the same benefits as everybody else goes. And I, th what this initiative does to reverse AB5, Uber, Lyft, and them are offering really this kind of extremely bare bones thing where they're guaranteeing an hourly wage that works out to be slightly above minimum wage, but it's only for the time that the driver has a passenger in the car. So all the other time you're driving around or doing that, you wouldn't get paid for that. Um, it's a very minimal stipend for uh, health insurance they're offering. And they're just saying, if you get uh, in a wreck, we'll cover your medical and disability. But uh, what they really want is just to ensure that their corporations are exempt from having to observe just general labor protections for generations to come. So um, there's a lot of money being spent on this. Um, and that's why the Democratic Party is opposing it. So going back to last month's, and we look at the whole overview, um, these are the ones that the, the party has endorsed. Uh, Prop 15 goes back to kind of refigure some of the Prop 13 restrictions that worked on uh, limiting property taxes. To, so big commercial entities like Disneyland uh, pay a more fair share. Prop 16 ends the ban on affirmative action. That's a yes vote for the Democrats. Prop 17 allows parolees to vote as they are in most states, as people on probation can already do. Prop 18 allows 17-year-olds to vote in a primary election if they're going to turn 18 by the general, again, increasing the franchise uh, and uh, making the system more responsive and democratic. Prop 25 ends cash bail. And that's another one, if you follow the money, uh, bail bonds companies are really underwritten by international insurance companies. And they're spending a lot of money to do this. And cash bail in practice ends up being um, a really uh, oppressive and disruptive thing to the community. It falls disproportionately on people of color and people who are disadvantaged in a socioeconomic way. And it uh, essentially allows people that have the money not to wait in jail uh, while their case is being adjudicated, uh, but poor people have no such luxury. Uh, 14, and these we, we talked about all these today, the stem cell research, the property tax for homeowners 55 and over if they sell a house, uh, the rent control, and then regulating the dialysis clinics. And so uh, finally, I think what, you know, as we think about propositions generally, you're a student of California history. Uh, Hiram Johnson started this initiative in 1911. He was Teddy Roosevelt's running mate on the bull moose ticket, so he was progressive. And he thought then that this would be a way to put power back in the hands of the citizens. And so you can see with most things, if you follow the money, 
like with AB5, like with the dialysis clinics, like with cash bail, uh, you can kind of figure out pretty easily who the good guys are and who the bad guys are and what's going to be most beneficial to the public and what's going to be most onerous. So these uh, synopses will be available, I'm sure, on uh, the various platforms through the club, either through email or the website or in the newsletter. Uh, and that's it. Thanks very much. That's great. Thank you, Sean. So our next guest is Tara Lawson Reamer, candidate for county supervisor in the third district. I'm going to unmute you now, Tara, and then we can begin. Oh, unmute. Hello. Hey, there you are. Hello, Hello. Tara. Good to see you. Uh, Tara and guess her running mate. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is right. That is a great description. This is, um, she's the better part of the ticket, definitely. Um, the more dynamic, younger part of the ticket, that's Ava Kai. Uh, everyone likes her better than me, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> so, um, so thank you all very much uh, for inviting me tonight. Um, and Ava Kai, thank you for letting me talk to the group. Um, so I just wanna take a moment to talk a little bit about the importance of this race. Uh, we've, we stand at a pivotal a time in San Diego County's history. Uh, we've been governed by an incredibly conservative board of supervisors for over um, a generation, really for almost 30 years. And their reactionary right-wing policies on everything from healthcare to policing, to mental health services, to social services, to in the environment, to climate, to open space, um, you know, has really radically underserved our community in so many ways and, and really severely impacted the most vulnerable members of our community the most. And, you know, you can see that now with uh, COVID-19 that our healthcare system was just not equipped. Um, and that was true, I think, across the country. You know, that's not unique to San Diego, but we in San Diego are doubly hit because uh, our county supervisors have underinvested in public health. Um, you can look at you know, at the climate and uh, climate action. We, there's other co counties across California who've taken action on climate, uh, but we haven't. We've been sued multiple times for a climate action plan that's so bad it doesn't even meet minimum state standards. We're literally uh, blocking progress on protecting our planet for these kinds of little little kids that are you know going to inherit a ca climate catastrophe. Um, so. And then we, you know, I grew up here. I'm actually a third generation San Diegan. And I remember when a lot of the spaces where uh, we now have uh, McMansions were places where I could go hiking. Um, and all of those big de sprawl development projects that have led to a lot of the traffic that we've uh, kind of experienced that and has not uh, created any affordable housing for anyone, um, that's all being driven by Board of Supervisors that are in the pocket of big developers. So. I really appreciated what Sean had to say about follow the money. This is going to be a very hard fought race. Um, they, the Republicans are going to put in probably about at least $2 million, primarily from, hold on, she's about to, one sec. Um, primarily <laughs> averting catastrophe. Um, they're going to put in a, probably about $2 million, mostly from uh, big developers and uh, some from folks who are just ideologically right-wing Republicans. Um, so it's a, a lot at stake. Uh, this is going to be the last stand for the Republicans. If we can flip the Board of Supervisors, if we can win the seat in District 3, it's going to transform San Diego. We will have um, a Democratic mayor in the city of San Diego, which is, you know, a huge uh, part of the county, uh, regardless. And, um, you know, we've seen trends in, across San Diego in terms of, you know, more Dems being elected and at all levels, but the county remains staunchly right-wing Republican. And so if my opponent wins, we will have a right-wing Trump majority on the board. Uh, she is not just a Republican, she's a She's a Trump Republican. She endorsed him early in the primary when she still had other choices. She's flown back to the White House multiple times to meet with him. Um, she's lobbied for more, like get that more money for the border wall. Um, she 
is a staunch uh, defender of you know what she calls gun rights. She opposes any kind of ban on any kind of assault weapons. Um, you know, she opposes the Affordable Care Act. You know, if we, she had her way, we would have 400,000 San Diegans without health care in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, if she was able to overturn the ACA, which is what she's been advocating for. Uh, so she uh, is Trump in our local community. Um, and I know so many of us recognize that this is the election of our lifetimes um, in Washington, uh, but it is also, frankly, um, the election of our lifetimes here in San Diego. I, I look up and down the state and there's no other election in all of California where there's as much at stake as in this election. Um, I think everywhere else you look, uh, they've, a lot of those, um, those power shifts have already happened. Um, and San Diego, it has not. You know, we, it's, uh, the County Board of Supervisors controls a $6.3 billion annual budget. Uh, I'll say that number again, in case you didn't hear it, a $6.3 billion annual budget. So it's a huge deal. Um, it uh, controls the sheriffs, it controls the deputy uh, district attorneys, it controls the public defenders, uh, responses around homelessness, mental health services, social services, Medi-Cal, uh, CalFresh, um, you know, basically every program that, you know, we think of as, as like vital to uh, uh, providing a safety net in, in San Diego. Uh, beyond that, um, rental assistance, affordable housing, uh, they have a lot to do with uh, climate change policy, open space, traffic, sprawl, investments in mass transit um, or not. So um, again, I don't want to uh, keep talking at you. I, I obviously think about this race all day, every day, but I can't win the seat alone. They're going to throw, like I said, at least $2 million into this race. And we are not going to match that money. It's not possible, right? You know, we're, 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 we're the, we're the voice of, of the working folks, uh, but we can outwork them. You know, they might outspend us, but we're going to outwork them. So that is what I promise you is that we can win if we work harder than they do. And so what, uh, can, what can people on this meeting do to help you get elected? What's, what's the next step? Great. Um, so there are three things. One is we are phone banking three nights a week. And I can put the, the link to volunteer in the chat um, right after I finish speaking. So uh, why don't I just take a show of hands. If you think you could sign up for one phone bank shift, uh, put it in the chat or raise your hand. Great. I guess I see some hands. Awesome. Okay, thank you guys, wonderful. So the second thing that you can do is we're doing lit drops, um, socially distant lit drops. So the phone banks are from home. Um, you, you get on Zoom with a bunch of your friends like tonight and then you call voters and then afterwards you talk about it and it's actually a lot of fun. Uh, so it's a socially distant Zoom uh, phone banking. Our lit drops are also socially distant. So we're doing them every Tuesday and Saturday um, and you, you drive up keep your mask on, grab the, grab the door hangers, get your, get your packet, go off, uh, put the door hangers on people's doors. Don't knock, don't talk. Um, you know, and then that's it. So people know you were there. We ask people to like write a little uh, personal note on those door hangers. So people know you were there, but it's all like very, very safe. Um, so that's the other thing. Uh, we've already covered a uh, 20% of the district, which is incredible because this district's enormous. It's as, the same size as a congressional district. So there's uh, over 400,000 households that are registered voters. So we've already done 20, uh, 20%. So we're doing great, but we need help. So first is phone bank, second is lit drops, and third is donate. You know, like I said, they're going to outspend us by orders of magnitude, but every dollar helps. Uh, we have a big push that we're trying to get out on um, digital ads to uh, folks that are 18 to 34 because they don't really know about the county soups. Um, and so every dollar that we're raising, um, we're trying to get those digital out ads out um, and up as soon as possible. And that would be incredibly helpful as well. So those okay, are the great. Three things. So, um, yeah, so I mean, you, you started to address this already, but let's focus on it directly. Given Given the amount of resources that the Republicans are putting in this race, you know, we, we all know that Democrats have a long history in San Diego 
of, um, well, running placeholder candidates, which you clearly are not. You clearly are putting your heart and soul into this. But tell us uh, kind of specifically, what is it that you're doing? How are you going to win up against well, these odds? I mean, a couple things. Um, first of all, the, the demographics of this district are in our favor. And th that's why I said, if we do the work, we win. Uh, the, about 39%, 40% of the registered voters in the district are Dems and only about 30% are Republicans. Uh, and the rest are um, independents. So the independents are up for grabs. They lean Democrat. Um, they're more likely to, to vote Democrat. They, uh, the, Biden is gonna win this district by 22 points. So even though they have a resource advantage, you know, you can only put so much lipstick on a pig at the end of the day, right? I mean, and the, their candidate is bad. Voters don't want their candidate. I mean, it's not that complicated. Like they don't. We got uh, the polling back and we start tied dead even. Um, and then after people hear everything about me and everything about my opponent, uh, equal like positives and negatives, I win by 14 points. Uh, it's a blowout. Um, and that's because the demographics of the district are fa stacked in our favor. The, what they have going for them is money. So that's why it's so vital that we do the work because voters in this district want me. They don't want her. They just don't know it yet. They need to be told. The message isn't even very complicated. It's literally so simple. Tara's the Democrat. Kristen Gaspar is the Trump Republican. Done. I mean, that's all okay. I need to know. <laughs> All right, so we got one or two more minutes here. Um, any final words? Um, I'm gonna just put those uh, those uh, links in the chat. Uh, can I just get an, a show of hands? I had, we had people who said they'd phone bank, um, other folks who think they might wanna uh, either drop literature or would be able to contribute online tonight. Okay, let's see some hands, see those hands going up. Great, I see a bunch of commitments. Great. Awesome, right. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I mean, right, like I said, it's just, uh, we have a path to victory, but it, it's gonna be up to us to walk on that path. Okay, thank you for joining us, Tara. And uh, for those of you who f for any reason can't see the chat, like you're on YouTube, uh, the URL is uh, taralawsonreamer.org. And uh, I'm sure no matter how you spell it, Google will be able to figure it out for you. So um, let's uh, move on. Um, we're going to next hear uh, from uh, uh, two Democrats on the La Mesa City Council, Akilah Weber and Colin Parent. They're going to talk together. And then immediately after them, we're going to hear from Jack Shu, who hopes to uh, join them on the council and really make some big changes there. So I'm going to go in there right now and do the unmute thing here. That's one. And that's two. All right. So, uh, Colin and Akila, are you are you there? Are you unmuted? Unmuted. Unmuted. Hey, there's Colin. All right. So, um, you guys are primarily here to talk, at least for this segment, about some of the initiatives that's going on in La Mesa for police reform. So, tell us about that a little bit. And I don't know whichever you want to start. Just jump in. Colin, you can start. Well. I was gonna. I was gonna invite you to start, Akila, because uh, while I'm, you know, very proud to be uh, supporting uh, our efforts for police reform, Akila on our council has really taken the lead on um, getting that started and making that a priority amongst the council. And uh, I think that's, you know, been especially fortuitous given that we, you know, the the um, challenges we're having in La Mesa right now that we already have this process uh, going and um, and be able to get started. So. Uh, Akila, why don't I um, uh, invite you to, uh, it, <laughs> if yeah, you have a quiet enough here. home to, yeah. Yeah, sure. So um, thanks as usual for inviting me. I, I feel like I'm coming back home because this is where everything got started. So thank you very much for the invitation. Um, you know, we all know that there have been issues within um, La Mesa for a very long time. Um, concerning policing, concerning um, minority groups. And there has been a resistance on the council for years to really do anything about it. Um, this or last year, um, I was able to convince the council to 
um, start something called a task force to kind of see if uh, a police oversight committee is something that um, La Mesa needs and what kind of task or commission we would have here in La Mesa that would work for La Mesa because we understand that every city and every jurisdiction is different. Um, in the midst of that, we, we chose the members and in the midst of that, unfortunately, we had um, COVID and then we had George Floyd and we had all of the protests slash riots that occurred um, in La Mesa. And um, you know, it became very clear um, to more than myself at that time that having a police oversight commission in La Mesa was extremely important. Um, you know, I have no problems in saying that had the event at MTS not happened in La Mesa, we would not have had the protests in La Mesa and we would have there then not had the riots that occurred after. Um, and so, you know, our task force has been working hard. They've been actually working overtime, thanks, you know, to Colin supporting the effort to making sure that they had enough resources so that it wasn't dragged on where most of our task force or committees meet once a month. We recognize that this is something that was long overdue. And so they were oftentimes meeting every week um, as, a, as a task force and then even meeting at, at a subcommittee um, outside of that. And so, you know, they have created something. They are bringing it before council um, next Tuesday. I am um, anxiously anticipating hearing what they are proposing for La Mesa. Um, you know, we know that uh, we need something strong. We need something progressive. We need something with some meat in it, not just something that um, tries to pacify, you know, a few people just to check that box. So I'm, I'm very hopeful. Um, and what we have, um, you know, we are at kind of like a crossroads. Um, we, can, we can do a lot or we can do nothing. So not only do we have the task force coming forth, but as many of you are aware, our chief of police has resigned. And um, that gives us now the opportunity to really look to see what kind of chief we want to run our police department. Um, because oftentimes you follow the leader Right, And so if the leader um, is committed to diversity, is committed to making sure that everyone who lives and visits and does business within the city of La Mesa feels welcome, regardless of their race, their gender, their sexual orientation, then you know, that will trickle down to the officers as well. And for those that don't understand it, um, there will be quicker consequences, hopefully, than what we have seen in the past. So I'm, I'm very, um, very optimistic about the opportunities that we have um, before us uh, because of the things that we have um, already met with in La Mesa and we continue to meet with some of these um, interesting groups that have sprung up uh, since our, okay. our protest slash riot. Great. So um, Akilah and Colin, um, do either of you support defunding the police. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't think, uh, I don't, and I think that's the wrong way to think about this. I think we need to be thinking about what are, what do we not, like, what do we want, right? And so like one of the things that's actually gonna be on the agenda at the council meeting on Tuesday is, uh, is uh, we're gonna be discussing some alternative methods for, um, for addressing certain things that the, currently the police are forced to handle right now, like um, mental health issues and, and other things. We're going to uh, hopefully apply for some grant funding to, uh, to be able to go get that. And so like, that's what we should be focusing on is like how we're addressing these challenges. We shouldn't be, it's, it's, it seems, I don't know, sort, sort of strange for me that we're like really, that some people are focusing on where the money is and the accounting of whether or not which agency it's under. Like if you had, a, if you had sort of non-uniformed non-uniformed personnel who are approaching uh, people who check with mental health challenges or, or, or homeless with, with compassion and, and appropriateness, and they were within the department, like that would be fine. Like, I, I think that's the, the, I think we should be focusing more on, on, on what we're trying to accomplish as opposed to where, you know, you know, where, where specifically the, the money is in these, in these budget documents. Um, uh, you know, but that being said, we, you know, if we, if we do want to focus on, 
uh, if we do want to focus on uh, you know different activities, like you know, is it possible that we take certain money from from where it is existing in the department to to achieve those things? Yeah, I mean that's on the table for sure. But the but but my goal is not to reduce is not to reduce the funding to the police. Uh, uh, it's it's we need to uh, make sure that what we're doing uh, in the public safety realm is appropriate. And the, you know, and I'll okay. just say just for the other thing too, just for people to to think about, like we want. I want, well, I want, and I think this is true for, for most LaMasons, we want uh, our public safety personnel to have good pay and benefits. We want to be an attractive employer uh, because we do compete uh, with other uh, agencies in the region and, and even outside of the region. And so, uh, and I think that's, a, that's an important thing that doesn't change. What, what can change and what should change is, is, is some of our uh, priorities and our practices um, uh, within policing. So okay, I like so to I like to use ahead. the term um, reallocation of resources, right? So, you know, what we have grown into a society is utilizing the police for things that um, they may not necessarily be trained for, or we're kind of wasting what their training is going out and doing things that someone else can actually do. And when we look at some of the the times when they get when we have issues is when they are called into situations that they're really not the right uh, individuals or organizations that should be called. Some of you may be aware of the most recent lawsuit that was just in the newspaper um, against the city and the La Mesa Police Department. And it dealt with how a La Mesa, La Mesa Police Department um, officer handled a um, 11 year old child with Down syndrome um, who had left school and was not that far away from school, but had left the, the actual gate. And so, you know, they called the police. I, I still don't understand why they called the police. Um, but when the parents arrived, that 11 year old child with special needs was handcuffed. And that is not a situation where you necessarily needed the police to come out. Um, if you had um, a social worker, someone from the school, someone who's more equipped to deal with those situations. The situation that he looks was kind of the same, you know, coming on a, on, a, on a school ground. So I look at reallocation of resources. Who is best to serve certain um, situations with this city? So I don't say defund, I say reallocation. Okay. Um, I wanna ask a few questions now that may seem obvious or even downright offensive, but people, are out there misrepresenting what we as Democrats stand for now. Colin, Akil, I don't know if you were at the pre-meeting, but Colin, we were definitely talking about it then before the meeting start. So let's get some things on the record so anybody listening will know where we stand. Are violence, looting, and arson an acceptable means of protest? Absolutely not. And I no. think I'm really, really grateful for um, uh, Vice President Biden's uh, comments on that earlier this week. I think it really helped clarify um, some of the um, misrepresentations that people are putting, and also let me just clarify, I, just Mitch, to you know, without without um, you know pick, picking apart your question too much, I don't I, I I don't think those are they're not viable for a protest. I don't think the the rioters thought they were viral, you know, thought they were protesting. They were pro, they were peaceful protesters who had been in La Mesa a number of times, uh, peacefully protesting, and that is very different than people who who came in with an intent to cause mayhem and to, to steal. These are just, these are, these are different activities and, and for the, I think for the most part are different active, different people. Okay, we have a question actually from Jean Mullally. It looks very interesting. Um, is the FBI investigating who destroyed the La Mesa's union and Chase Banks? News reported on a man who was arrested with Molotov cocktails in his car. He was reported turned over to federal authorities. Was he a paid provocateur? What is the status of the federal government's investigation? Do you guys know anything about that? Only what I, I read in the, in the news. Yeah, yeah. As I'm, yeah. yeah, I was reading it a lot. I didn't even read it all the way through before I spoke it. So, um, but, but to but so to, the, our, but to, the, to Gene's point, though, I mean, as, as far as I know, um, that there was a there was a federal uh, indictment of someone uh, with a Molotov uh, cocktail. Um, in, uh, in in the course of the riots, I don't know if they were involved with the banks in particular, but like um, there's there's you know there are, there are in fact you know some law enforcement ac actions you know still still ongoing uh, related to some of that um, property destruction. Okay, um, so um, 
So the people who, who looted and burned La Mesa, they are being prosecuted, correct? I think some are, but I, I, I don't know that, I don't know, I, don't, I mean, I don't believe that everyone who participated in that is, 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 I think they should be, but, you know, like that's the problem with, with crowds and, and, and riots is that sometimes it's hard to, to you know, pull, find the, the people who participated. But, but, some, but some are, which, and to the extent that the law enforcement has been able to identify them. Okay, so let's, let's talk a little bit more about the police oversight. Um, because we're, we're unfortunately are running out of time a bit. Um, is there anything you'd like to add there or anything we've left out? Yeah, well, one thing that I just wanted to add, I mean, I think um, uh, Keila gave, gave a good, good, you know, sort of a broad overview of some of the, the steps that are happening uh, or, or about to happen is that we are gonna have at least some process for the public to weigh in on what they're looking for, for the new, the new chief. And I'm gonna, I wanna encourage everyone on this call and in La Mesa to be engaged in that and to contribute uh, uh, their input on that. I mean, I don't, I, I'm, we're, I don't think it's like exactly decided exactly how it's structured. I don't think we're gonna get to see like four resumes from applicants and then like get to pick and, you know, get to weigh in on them. I don't think that's how uh, the, the hiring is gonna go, but there is gonna be a, like, there will be some opportunities at public meetings for people to say, hey, this is the kind of characteristics that I'm looking for for a chief. This is what I want them to, the, the, the chief to take as a, as a priority when they lead the department. These are some things that I thought have not been good and I want them to be better in the future. And it's just gonna be really important for the public to be uh, engaged in that uh, so that the, because this, the, and the council doesn't make those decisions, it's the city manager. And so we need to, uh, but we hired and fired the city manager. And so it's important. So it's not like we don't have any role. We have a we have a role, but but it's a little it's a little removed. But it's a, but it's really important that um, my uh, that our colleagues on the city council uh, hear this. Uh, it's really important that they communicate that they are hearing what they're hearing to the city manager uh, to help inform the decision that uh, that he makes. Uh, so I'll be eager. To, I'll be sharing a lot of that stuff on social media and over email when when we get details about how people uh, can participate in the, in those processes. Okay, great. Um, before we sign off, Colin, you are running for re-election. So oh, that's right. That, how, oh, I forgot, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so how is that going and how can people who are uh, on the meeting today help? Yeah, so that they, thank you for asking. Uh, so uh, like, uh, like Akila said earlier, this, you know, it's very much like coming home when I get to speak in, uh, to this club um, because I started out as, as a board member here this club was really supportive of my um, candidacy and my campaign. A lot of people on this call, you know, knocked on doors and called voters and put a sign in front of their home. Uh, and so I need I need a lot of that same stuff uh, uh, for the, for this reelection. I can't knock on doors, um, but I can call people and I can I can distribute signs. I certainly will need financial support too. Uh, so much of the communications to voters are going to have to be, you know, paid media. It's going to have to be mailers and Facebook ads and that sort of thing. And so if people are able to contribute financially, that really matters. You can go to colinparent.org. You can sign up uh, to volunteer, to, to get a yard sign, to make a contribution. Uh, and I would really appreciate anyone's, anyone's help. I think we're going to, I think we're going to, we're going to be able to do it, but there's a lot of people in the, um, you know, running and these are weird times. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm not taking any of this for granted. I'm, I'm, I'm putting my shoulder into it. Uh, and with your help, I'll be able to, um, to get reelected. And I do want to share before we move on to the next speaker, uh, I'm very pleased to, uh, I guess this is an official announcement uh, that uh, like the San Diego County Democratic Party, I'm also going to be endorsing, I am also hereby endorsing uh, Jack Shu, uh, who's also running for city council uh, as a Democrat uh, in La Mesa. So uh, hopefully we'll, we'll both get uh, both get elected in November and, and we can certainly use his uh, perspective and, and, and progressive heart uh, on the council uh, with Dr. Weber and I. Okay, great. Thank you. And by extraordinary coincidence, we happen to have Jack Shu with us. What are the odds? So I'm going to thank Colin and Akila. And then I am unmuting Jack Shu. And welcome, Jack, to our meeting tonight. Well, thank you, yes. Mitch. And thank you, Colin, for uh, endorsing me, uh, particularly at uh, my home club, uh, La Mesa Foothills. Um, and uh, I'm really happy to, to be here. Um, and I'm also feeling much at home here. Um, 
and I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about uh, a number of things. Um, to start out, the importance of me getting on the city council uh, and unseating uh, Licio. Um, at the last council meeting, there was a vote, 3 2 vote. The majority of Baber, Alicio, and Dr. A, the mayor, uh, voted to give the majority of funds, COVID funds, to businesses. Colin at that meeting pointed out that over 500 applicants looking for renter relief, renter, renter assistance um, in La Mesa applied to the City of San Diego's program, and of course, they did not qualify. We have a great need, and yet the City Council's majority elected to give much of the funds available to businesses as opposed to renters, which, who we know are in much dire uh, positions, and we'll have a lot more of them that need that. If we have a democratic, uh, a truly democratic majority, that vote would have been different. And at least uh, another couple of hundred thousand dollars could have gone towards that, meaning uh, a commensurate amount, 40 or more people could have had renter assistance out of that program. Yeah, yeah, and just, just to be clear, just to be clear, your, your victory in this election will create a democratic majority. It'll flip the board, or I mean, flip the council. It'll Correct. A, a, a voting uh, a Democratic uh, group. So I can support uh, Akila and Colin, and hopefully they will of course, uh, support my efforts to do the changes we need in La Mesa. Uh, so I think this is a real critical race. Um, if Aki uh, if uh, we get both incumbents back in, uh, we're still going to not have the kind of council that we need in La Mesa. We won't see the changes that we really need to make in the future. With regards to um, police reform, I've been working on that for over a year and a half um, or, or almost two years. Just remember that the grand uh, jury in San Diego recommended that the city of La Mesa have a police oversight board over five years ago. The police chief did not do it. And there was lack of leadership on our city council to move in that direction. Had we had that police oversight council, maybe we would have gotten some complaints about this officer Deegan at, that was involved in the incident in the trolley station because he has a track record. He had a track record way before that incident that occurred this year. We might have averted that whole incident because that council or that review board would have heard a complaint, passed it on to the police chief and something could have happened and all of this would not have occurred, as well as the incident in Helix High School. So that's lack of leadership and having a majority on the council is critical. It is critical to the health of our city. With regards to um, police oversight, I have 22 years of experience as a supervising law enforcement officer in, with the state of California. I've taught community policing. And I can tell you, I, I approached this with the thought that we need to regain trust in our police department. The police department gains its strength, not by having new ve newer vehicles or more weapons. They gain sh their strength, their power through the trust of the people. And when that trust is being eroded, we have to do something. The culture of law enforcement throughout this country we know is in trouble and we have to fix it. And we have to fix it quickly Police Review Oversight Board is one way to step in that direction. As a council, we need to ask for the right information. Do you guys know that there's data that the police department had that um, one of my volunteers actually was uh, Dave Meyer, who ran for sheriff. He did a Freedom of Information Act re request and discovered for the past three years, he had got the arrest records for the past three years uh, 13,800 arrest records, which show that 21% of the arrests made by the La Mesa PD police officers were for African Americans. But within La Mesa, only 7% of the population are African American. So the, the rate of arresting Blacks in, by La Mesa PD is three times the population in La Mesa. So we need to ask some questions and ask the future police chief in La Mesa, what about this data? What's, what's, and is there a reason for this? And how are you gonna uh, address this issue amongst your police officers? 
that's the kind of of leadership we expect from our our elected officials, and I would bring that to the uh, La Mesa Council. Uh, uh, lastly, I just want to make some quick um, announcements. Tomorrow, there's going to be a forum. East County Magazine is going to have a forum. I put up uh, the information that fairly early in the chat, uh, so you can scroll up there and find that. And there's there's some links to uh, that forum. Um, unfortunately, the forum will only have the four male candidates that are running for office uh, in the forum. Uh, the two women that are running, uh, the Republican Lothian and Alicia, uh, for one reason or another, are not attending that forum. So I encourage uh, you to attend that. And lastly, I'm going to give my last minute uh, uh, campaign pitch. Uh, this is a very serious uh, moment and crossroads, as uh, Council Member Weber pointed out. So if we're really Democrats and we want change, each one of you need to call, contact 10 voters, real voters in the city of La Mesa, 10 friends. You should have 10 friends that are voting in La Mesa. Ask them to look at Colin's website. Ask them to look at my website, jackshu.com. And if they can, to support both of us for city council. We need their votes. And secondly, we need them to contact another 10 people that are voters in La Mesa. That's how we need to get the numbers. Um, this is going to be a really a tough fight for me because uh, I'm not incumbent. I don't have the name recognition. So I need all of us to make an effort to contact voters in La Mesa to learn about me and Colin. And that's the way we're going to win. As Linda pointed out at the very beginning, we have to win. And we're not going to win if we don't do the work. And the work is incumbent on each of us to do that. So we have a, a good group of uh, uh, Democrats here. We have a Democratic majority in La Mesa or a lot of Democratic voters. We need all of them to vote for both of us. Otherwise, I don't know if we're going to get the kind of changes we need in La Mesa. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Jack. And good luck in your campaign. I know we're all supporting you. So um, next up, we're going to change the order around a bit. Um, and uh, talk to um, Ali Zaidi, who is going to tell us about what is going on on the county level. Ali is with the county party. Um, welcome, Ali. Are you uh, are you on the air? You still seem to be muted, so I'm clicking that ask to unmute button. There we go. Now I can speak. <clears throat> there we are. Yeah. Great. Hi, Ali. Hi there. Hello, everyone. My name is Ali. I am the engagement coordinator with the San Diego County Democratic Party. And among the many things that I oversee, one is our <clears throat> volunteer efforts, as well as our go team efforts. So just wanted to talk to you all about some of the things that the party is doing that you can perhaps get involved in to help us elect Dem in La Mesa and across the county. Um, on the GO team end, some of you may be members of the GO team, may be involved with that. And uh, the GO team will be continuing its activities in this election cycle. Uh, uh, COVID-19 will not be stopping us, but we are, of course, making adjustments to how the GO team operates. And most of our efforts will be focused on uh, remote voter outreach, which is going to be via phone. So, you know, we are in the process now of, of rallying all of our neighborhood leaders and uh, getting everything together so that process starts in earnest. Uh, for the most part, we are not recruiting new GO team members, um, but we have a pretty healthy, substantial base that we're already working with. Um, but that said, if you know anyone who is interested in participating in the GO team, we're not going to say no to anyone who wants to participate. Uh, so, do let us know. Um, and then, on the volunteer end of things, that everyone is absolutely invited to do. We've got uh, a few things that are happening every week. Um, we've already actually had a weekly phone bank that's been happening every Wednesday for the last couple months now that's been in support of Tara Lawson Reamer, uh, who of course spoke earlier today. And um, going forward, that phone bank is still going to be held every Wednesday uh, from, we're up two shifts on Wednesdays. That's gonna be from four to six, and then 6 to 8 p.m. every Wednesday in support of both Tara Lawson and Reamer, as well as making calls for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Um, so and that's a virtual that phone bank, right? Oh, yes, that's correct. This is all a virtual phone bank. We've been holding these all over Zoom. We have a virtual phone banking system that I usually am the person who 
posts and trains you in. So if you don't know how to use it, don't worry, I'll walk you through every step of the way. Um, and, and you join other volunteers over Zoom to, to you know, make those calls, chat, hang out. So it's a great way to meet people. It's a great way to get involved and help us you know, flip the County Board of Supervisors. In addition to that, we have a um, text bank that is happening every Tuesday and Thursday. Um, and that I believe, I have to double check the time. I wanna say it's five to seven, but I'm gonna drop a link in just a moment that's gonna go to our mobilize page, which has all of our volunteer activities. Um, but every Tuesday and Thursday evening, we also have a text bank that's on behalf of local candidates that the Democratic Party has endorsed, um, as well as for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And we'll be rotating which candidate we're supporting every week. Um, and then in addition to that, we also have phone banks happening every Monday and Saturday. And those are also going to be uh, for our locally endorsed candidates with a new candidate that we'll be doing making calls for every week as well as for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And on Mondays, that is going to be two shifts, one from four to 6 p.m. and one from six to 8 p.m. And then the Saturday shift will be in the morning, first from 10 to 12 p.m. and then another shift from 12 to 2 p.m. So those are our main uh, volunteer opportunities that we have open for anyone and everyone to participate in. If you are an experienced phone banker or text banker or door knocker, um, then you are more than welcome to join this. If you've never volunteered in any campaign before, which I have a feeling that most of you all in this club probably have in some way or another, um, you are also welcome and we'll get you trained up. And we are also looking to put together a program to do uh, some safe social distance lit drops, uh, very much in the realm of what Tara was speaking about earlier. So, you know, you'd pick up your your literature and your whatever, you know, whether you're using minivan or like printouts of your neighborhood, um, you know, from your car, you drive around, do your lit drops, you don't knock, you don't talk to anyone. Um, but we'll be putting that program together and we'll have some more details about that shortly. Um, and if you are interested in volunteering with us for any of the programs that I have, you know, just, oh, one last one actually too. We have one more uh, thing to actually tell you about. Um, we are using an app called Outvote, which is a relational organizing app. And it very much the, the theme of the app ties in to what Jack was talking about, where, you know, contact 10 friends, you know, get them to vote, get them to contact 10 friends. Well, there's actually an app that's used to organize your own friends and your family to do this. It's called Outvote and it's really nifty, really cool. You download it on your phone and it looks at your contacts, compares it to the, the voter file that exists from the state of California. And then can tell you like, okay, well, these are your friends who are registered to vote. These are your friends that aren't. And then of the friends who are registered, they'll tell you like, well, this one's registered Democrat. This person has voted, you know, in this many past elections. And it helps you know, like, you know, who can you already count on to be engaged? Who do you think might need a little nudge? And you could send the messages then um, to, to get them involved. So we're gonna be doing training sessions for Outvote. Uh, we have two training sessions coming up, I believe in the second weekend of September and the final weekend of September, I, that's also listed on our Mobilize page, along with all of our volunteer opportunities, which I am going to put into the chat right now, the link to get there. So bear with me as I put that in. Sorry, I'm on my phone right now. So, so that link is going to be sddems, dems plural, dot link slash help. And I just dropped, oh, I just sent that to Mitch, sorry sddems <laughs> <laughs> dot link slash help and let me send that to the everyone in the chat it was good, it was good for me to know <laughs> yeah. so it's a very easy link to remember sddems dot link slash help and if you go on that link that'll take you to our mobilize page which will have all of our volunteer opportunities listed those are updated regularly if there's anything new that's happening you'll see it there first and feel free to check that out look at the different opportunities we have for phone banking, text banking, training, and uh, sign up for whatever you can, invite your friends if you can, and we hope that we'll be able to see you online. And um, one thing to note is that while the phone banking for Terry Lawson Reamer has already begun, we've been doing that for a few weeks now, and we'll be doing that next week as well. The rest of our um, weekly phone banking and text banking will be starting from September 12th and, and onwards, I believe, until election day. Um, so that's all listed okay. there for you all to see. Great. Before you go, um, mm -hmm. I want to know how, or I think we all would like to know how we on this call can make sure that our votes are counted. 
no um, longer just met, you know, what, 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 what should our voting procedure be this year? Do you have a recommendation there? So uh, the county party is going to be releasing guidance in some way, shape or form that will, you know, let you guys know what's the best way to vote, what are the places where you can drop off a ballot, how do you vote by mail, et cetera. I am personally, and I speak for myself per personally, adhering mostly to President Obama's advice, which was, you know, vote early if you can. Um, not everyone can vote in person, but, you know, here in California, we're very fortunate to all have, be getting mail ballots. And so me personally, I, as soon as my mail, mail ballot comes in, I will be filling that out immediately. And then if there is a drop-off location nearby that the registrar of voters, you know, they'll be releasing a full list of that soon. I will be dropping mine off. I also encourage you to, you know, if you can't do that, then just mail it um, as soon as you can. So there's a lot of time for it to get to the voting centers and to be counted. But that said, the, the county party will be releasing official guidance, um, you know, once we're consulting with all of our party leaders and in releasing and letting you all know. But that that is my personal recommendation so far. Okay, great. Yeah, I just did a little Googling in the background here. It's uh, voting in ballot drop-off locations. Um, in, if you just Google on that for San Diego, you'll find it actually took me to a Democratic Party page, which I don't know if it has all the information, but I'm not going to mm -hmm. take up everybody's time looking at that now. But a little Google yeah. can help we'll out, put, as we'll, always. And we'll certainly put a page together to get everyone guidance uh, in the coming days and weeks, and uh, certainly before ballots drop. And, and when we do, you'll see that on our social media. You'll get that information via us, via email. So if you're not signed up for our newsletter, make sure you sign up for that as well on our website so you can get those important updates. Yeah, and I will I will try to pass the word through our newsletter as well, uh, mm -hmm. assuming the technology cooperates. Yeah, of so course. Yeah. Everyone will be able to get the word, yeah. All right, anything else you want to add, Ali? No, that's about it. Aside of that, I hope that you all are staying, staying safe and um, you know fired up and ready to go for this election. Okay, all right. Thank you, have a all good right. evening. All right, thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right, so our next speaker is going to be Christian Bilson, who is with uh, SoCal for Biden. And I'm gonna unmute you now, Christian. I think it's, uh, Christian, do you prefer Otto or Christian? That's, I'm unmuting you now and you can, that'll be your first very important question. Uh, either, uh, wh whichever you prefer. Uh, if you uh, call me Otto, I generally uh, know that, uh, it's something politically related. So, uh, or you're one of my high school buddies. So, um, uh, interesting. Auto, I answer to both. Um, okay. Is it possible? So, um, is it possible to uh, for me to share my screen? I'm just going to do a truncated version of uh, what I do every yeah. Saturday at 4:30. Um, and uh, right now, I'm putting something in the chat if I can. Uh, you are sharing the screen, and I mean, how long? How long is your every every Friday or Saturday thing go? Uh, that goes Usually. generally for uh, with questions. It sometimes goes to two hours, but uh, my presentation is usually about forty to forty-five minutes. And uh, good call on the truncated version. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> so I'm just going to jump ahead. Um, I will be sending these slides out to uh, to you, Mitch, and you can distribute them as well as a list of our activities throughout the week. Uh, before I Great. start, um, I really uh, appreciate you inviting me, uh, mainly because um, we've really organized out through the Inland Empire, Orange County. That's where I've been concentrating, and I've gotten some great partners in L.A. County, and they're really getting up and running there. I'm, I've been having difficulty finding uh, partners in San Diego County to really advertise out the fact that we have volunteer opportunities and stuff like that. And uh, the more volunteers we have, the more phone calls and texts we can make into the swing states to really make this uh, election um, not only uh, winnable, but winnable in such a, a great way that, uh, you know, there's no question who won. Uh, and there's no question that the American people have made a statement about this uh, current state of affairs in uh, in our country, this horrible period in our history. So um, let me just uh, jump in real quick. I'll go to my slides. Um, All righty. So this is about halfway through my uh, typical presentation. Uh, this is a, a three stage process for basically any campaign, you know, uh, you build out your organization, uh, then you're out making voter contact and there's get out the vote. We're kind of uh, phasing into phase two right now. 
we are still building out our organization. We are still mainly in our calling and in our texting, still uh, developing our volunteer base primarily within the swing states. So um, we're still in organization building mode, phasing into voter contact. Uh, and I'll get into uh, the ways that we're doing that in a second. And we need basically, we have a menu of opportunities of ways to get involved with the campaign. And the bottom line is, you know, recognizing the sense of urgency right now in all campaigns. If you're not involved with something, you need to get involved with something, be it your city council or, or uh, a district uh, county board of supervisors, you know, all of this wonderful speakers that have spoken, get involved. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna interrupt, I'm gonna interrupt you right there because you yourself identified the first question that everybody has that you haven't answered yet for us, which is why should San Diego Democrats volunteer for Biden? California is a lock for the Biden campaign. Exactly, because what we're doing, I, I thought I mentioned that, that we're calling into the swing states and we're building out our volunteer base in the swing states, not just here. We're doing this verbally by attending events and getting uh, volunteers here, but we need volunteers in the swing states so that they can network out with their friends and family and stuff like that. And really, we want to build out an organization in each of the swing states that uh, where we have uh, essentially voting captains that are in charge of uh, blocks of voters and uh, can basically educate them and instruct them on how to uh, get their ballots in properly. Uh, we are going to uh, have some hurdles uh, in some of the states, uh, for instance, Pennsylvania. Uh, they have difficulty with some of their counties getting out there vote by mail ballots. Uh, uh, they're supposed to be, you know, timely and uh, during the primary they were arriving uh, as late as the day before the election. So there's going to be problems with that and we're going to need to overcome certain hurdles. There's a Republican uh, administration in Wisconsin where we really need community groups to step up and that involves us as Californians calling into them and developing our, our volunteer base within those uh, within those uh, swing states so that we can uh, get, you know, have an army in place to overcome any hurdles. So that's what we're, we as Californians are doing is we're currently building out our volunteer base in those swing states. Um, it, I'll go into the ways that we can do that, but uh, we are phasing into other areas where we're filtering, filtering out our database uh, to take out the Trump voters and the people that are undecided and uh, trying to persuade them. So we're phasing into to phase two of the campaign right now. So uh, when we're uh, phone making, some of them will be uh, voter contact in the sense that we're persuading them to vote, persuading them to, to vote by mail and uh, uh, filtering out those individuals that support Trump. And really we're going to uh, very, very soon, probably uh, the second or last week of, uh, the second to last week or the last week of September, it will be get out the vote. Uh, and October, the first week will be basically be 24 hours a day. We're gonna be doing whatever we can to, uh, to chase those ballots. And that will happen all of October. Um, so that's where we're at in the campaign. Uh, this is just a little bit about uh, what we've done locally. I began organizing in Inland Empire. This was back when uh, there was actually an organizing staff that worked for the Biden campaign. They were all disassembled and sent to the swing states to work for the Democratic parties there. So technically the organizing staff that uh, reports directly to the campaign nationwide is all volunteer based like myself. And uh, we are about three quarters of the way. The goal I had set for mid-September was to have 1,000 volunteers in our database. Uh, currently our San Diego database is slim, maybe 10 people total, maybe 15. Um, I've had difficulty uh, getting out the word in San Diego and those individuals that said that they wanted to step up and help building out the uh, organization in San Diego have come and gone. Uh, and uh, so if there's anybody here that is, is passionate about uh, getting Joe and Kamala elected, I'd love to have your support and contacting all the clubs and, and uh, you know, sharing resources and stuff like that. But bottom line, I set a goal for mid-month, uh, mid-September. We're already overcoming that. We have shifts filled seven days per week in our phone banks. Uh, by mid-September, we're going to uh, basically have our phone banks going all day. Uh, and uh, so we have a reporting mechanism. We're reaching our metrics and uh, we're growing all the time. And uh, you can see in this PowerPoint, which you will receive, uh, we're still having difficulty in San Bernardino County and San Diego County getting organized out in those uh, counties. But we'd love for you to step up to the challenge and help us build. 
Um, volunteer management is something that I always need. If you're a super volunteer willing to contact the, the uh, people in the volunteer database, encourage them to come back. I definitely uh, need support with that. And uh, areas where um, key demographics that uh, we're currently lacking in as far as volunteerism, um, you can see the top two youth and Latinx. Um, just by virtue of this meeting here, you can tell that this meeting is older and it's wider and we're having difficulty cracking into uh, the different demographics that are uh, more passionate about, uh, we're passionate about other candidates, but we need to get them to work for the Joe Biden campaign. And if you have uh, any uh, ins in those demographics, I'd love to present to them and uh, uh, get a chance to speak about why we should be passionate about uh, electing Joe Biden. So the ways we are supporting right now, there are five key areas and these go in descending order. Um, uh, you can make phone calls for Joe. Like I said, we have seven days a week and I will uh, have those emailed out to you. You can also in the, uh, the chat right now, I put in our link tree. They, there are links to all of our volunteer forms, all of our phone banks, uh, getting started on text banking, uh, all of our social media. It's all in that link tree if you wanna check that out. Um, what we're doing right now, we have two methods of phone banking and we train you at every phone bank to do um, either. Uh, the first one is virtual phone bank. That's where you can read the entire script before you begin calling and you dial the number and you speak to one individual and then you tell the computer when you're finished and you uh, make all of your selections. The auto dialer will continue dialing until uh, it reaches a human voice. And in which case you're, uh, you begin with the presentation or uh, rather with the, uh, the script at that point. Um, there are different people that have uh, preferences on both. The reason we do both is because they're uh, are certain people that are technically challenged and therefore we direct them to the virtual phone bank. And uh, for those that are uh, good to go on computers and stuff like that, uh, we direct them to the auto dialer. You get to talk to a whole lot more people that way. So we're checking in on people on these calls. We're encouraging them to volunteer or vote by mail or vote for uh, Joe and Kamala. Uh, that's the whole purpose of these calls. Uh, each individual phone bank will have a different purpose. Uh, but generally, for the most part, right uh, as of today, we are still encouraging more volunteering. And uh, if you're on the auto dialer, that's generally, uh, they're hitting Florida in a big way. And uh, if you come to the VPB, we're hitting Arizona in a big way. So um, we're partnering with Mission for Arizona as much as possible because I know the organizers there and I can, uh, I can get volunteers uh, put to work uh, right away. And like I said, seven shifts available. Uh, generally, these calls uh, can be, uh, we can be talking to a lot of people or we can, talk to be, can be talking to very few people, depending on the calling universe that we're using at any given time. But sometimes there are very pleasant calls, sometimes there can be uh, some negativity, but uh, you know, it's just par for the course when we're calling. The next is uh, in descending order is uh, text banking for Joe. Uh, you do have to attend a training, even though uh, you may be familiar with through text. You're doing it for other campaigns. It is exactly the same way, but in order to get invited to Slack and uh, request texts, you need to go through a training. Then you get on Slack and on these slides, these uh, things that are underlined, these are linked. You can utilize them in order to uh, begin the process. Once you're on Slack, you take a quiz. And then once you've passed that quiz, you're good to go on texting for, for Joe. And they are texting to all of the swing states as well, primarily asking them to, uh, to volunteer. Uh, you can, you know, it's a great way to do it. If you've texted before, you can do hundreds of texts in a single session. So it's a great way to reach out to people. Uh, uh, I, and like I said, this is second in descending order of importance for the campaign. The next is hosting events. This is something that I think is really critical for uh, San Diego County. If you can gather a group of people together that would like to hear about what we're doing in the campaign and you're willing to listen to uh, and are willing to listen to a spiel from me, uh, please invite me, let's get together, let's, let's do uh, an event. Um, like I said, we're having difficulty uh, building out excitement in San Diego County. So um, any help that we can uh, uh, get with, with that sort of thing, uh, we, uh, we would love your help. And once again, I have this link, all it takes is filling out a form and uh, inviting people uh, to, the, uh, to the link that you receive when you fill out that form. So uh, another option is to just, uh, you're probably aware of this already, mobilize is up. If you go to joebiden.com slash events, you can find events near you. 
um, and you can attend as you scroll down, they become uh, farther away in distance and time. So if you scroll down far enough, you could find events in Chicago and New York and, and things like that. So that's another way to get integrated with the campaign, see what people are up to, attend their uh, events. I have every Friday a uh, imbibing with Biden happy hour event where it's like open office hours and we can talk about everything. And it's usually a boisterous group of maybe 50 or 60 people all talking about various things. So it's a, it's a great time. Um, uh, you can have events like that. Uh, I have somebody, uh, we're in the works of doing a, a comedy night, which will be recurring uh, with uh, less well-known comics. And uh, we're also putting together a yoga, uh, weekly yoga for people, that just any type of gimmicky event that you wanna do, or just a coffee chat with you and your friends, colleagues, neighbors, We'd love to have you do that and advertise it via our, our campaign. And uh, when you receive this, you can fill out that form there. Uh, social media is uh, fifth on the list of importance. I just wanted to show you this graphic real quick. Uh, a lot of uh, people that I present to, they, they take social media with a grain of salt, but really it is a critical element of our campaign. We cannot door knock in the swing states and uh, people do not know every single event. I get emails and complaints and calls all the time about Joe not doing this, Joe not doing that. Well, you're not on our Facebook pages because you know that Joe is doing those things if you were integrated with our uh, social media. That's how we're distributing positive media. Uh, if Joe is doing a speech, if uh, Kamala is doing a speech, if there's some sort of round table event, if uh, LGBTQ, plus people are having uh, you know, a specialized event in, you know, for the campaign. All of that's advertised there, as well as graphics and stuff like that. What we need for you to do is to be on these groups and to spread the news out to your networks and to encourage them to spread it through their networks. Because- uh, Okay, Otto, we have, we have about two minutes more. So all right. um, let's, let's wrap up and all right. get well, uh, actions to do. Yeah, there's social media, so join in social media. Um, here's a list of things that you can do. Somebody uh, uh, just mentioned the, uh, the, uh, the app. Um, we have that exact same app, except for it's the Vote Joe app. It's tailored towards our campaign. It's very cool. I suggest you go to one of their trainings because it will search through your phone and you can look at uh, people in your phone that uh, you can see what uh, party they are and uh, their voting record. It's, it's a really robust program. You can add people to certain campaigns. Uh, you can look up people by name and city and uh, see their voting record. It's, it, it's, it's all kinds of great stuff. It's a very robust program. Um, and here's a bunch of things that you can tick off uh, when you receive these slides. Um, joining Joe's Soul Squad is a great way to get uh, uh, material directly to your inbox. It's not like the uh, the, the advertisements to, uh, to donate. It gives you uh, updates on the campaign and uh, future events and stuff like that. You can make your own Team Joe graphic. And uh, here's some other recommendations. Really, like I said before, we need to build out in San Diego. We need volunteers here and we need them by the tens of thousands in order to contact every single voter in the swing states. There are millions of voters that we have to contact. And that means that we need thousands of volunteers hitting the phones and hitting the texts. And uh, I did not mention, but we do encourage postcarding and letter writing. And people ask me about that all the time. And I give them uh, organizations that are currently doing that. So those are the five things that we can do for Joe Biden. We can call, we can text, we can host events, we can send letters and postcards, and we can, advert, we can be an ambassador on social media. So if you're doing one of those things, great. You, know, uh, you need to be doing something this uh, election because it is the election of our lifetime. And uh, whomever you're supporting, get out there, whatever time you can give, give it to somebody. Um, and uh, like I said, I will have, I'll put in the, uh, the chat, my uh, non-truncated presentation where I, you know, questions and answers and, and all that good stuff. And I do videos and graphics and stuff like that uh, where we can talk in greater uh, detail. Uh, but that's all I got. Um, thank you so thank much. Thank you very uh, much, sir. Okay, so um, next um, we're going to hear from Linda again, Linda Armacost, who's got um, something else to say. Linda, I'm going to unmute you. Okay, 
Am I on mute? There you are. Great. All right. Well, I've been playing around with the different uh, one third screen and what. Anyway, I know Jeff Benich is here. And I wanted to. Uh, I'm going to do a very proper thing for Jeff soon. I just, it's been real hard. I haven't been able to get it together. So we are going to do something to honor him, to thank him for all his efforts and time and um, <clears throat> he would, you know, he's done a lot for us. I, I'm getting all choked up. So anyway, I know you're there, Jeff. If I change screens, let's see. I'm getting good at this. Hey, there you there are. There is. It's Jeff. There he is. Um, I just wanted to say from all of us for as long as it's been since 07, Thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> we want to get you something. I want to get you something. And um, I just haven't gotten it together enough. So if you all don't understand, um, Jeff um, came on board uh, early on in 08. And then um, <clears throat> in a flash of brilliance on my part, um, I created the position of VP for programming because prior to that, the president wrote the newsletter, um, got the speakers and did a bunch of stuff. So I just couldn't do it. And Jeff was just made for that position. He, kn he knows everybody, he's connected with everyone. I remember years ago doing the pride parade and we're walking and we're carrying the banner and we're walking and he said, oh, I used to have a shop over there. Oh, you know, we had a store down there and it was just like, he knows everyone. And so he was just wonderful with his connections. But the biggest thing, which now bless Mitch and Sean for doing is to get us a monthly column in the local courier papers. We tried for years and years and years. We sent out press releases, nothing, nothing. Well, Jeff knew the guy. And so all of a sudden we have a monthly column and the member just ship started growing and we'd ask people, how did you hear about us? Oh, we read about it in the La Mesa Courier. We read about it in the Mission Times Courier. We didn't even know there was a democratic club here. So, you know, so many things that uh, Jeff has done to help this club. Uh, one of the major reasons we are club of the year, whoop, whoop. And um, again, I'll put together something much better than this um, next, month but i just i'm gonna change the screen again so i can see jeff and tell you how much i appreciate you and love you and yeah so next month next month everybody yay for jeff yay for jeff. thank you yay for jeff yeah. all right thank you linda so um all right we've got a couple more things to do here tonight getting getting close to the end um, is uh, Hugh, Hugh McGrain with us by any chance? Hugh, you dropped an email. I don't see you. I don't see your name on the list, but uh, private message me if you are here. I know you had some things you wanted to say. Um, and until then, I'm going to also call out the name of uh, Gene Mullally or Robert Grand to talk about an upcoming fundraising event. Um, I'm going to arbitrarily pick Gene here. So. Um, Gene, what can you tell us about what's coming up on the 12th? Well, I, I hope I'm unmuted uh, and you can see You me. are, good job. You are unmuted and visible. Eric uh, uh, Herford uh, wrote this and I uh, like to, sorry for reading it, but uh, I do it best, more, more concisely if I read it. Uh, the uh, San Diego County Democratic Party East Area Caucus We'd like to invite you to join a Zoom webinar fundraiser featuring Betty Yee, California controller and moderated by Dana Quitner. So the date is Saturday, September the 12th, five o'clock to 6.30. Uh, to RSVP for this Zoom event, please go to sddems.link uh, forward slash yee, Y-E-E. -E. Uh, the minimum requested donation is $25. All funds raised will support candidates running for office in East County this November 3rd. We have a huge number running, so we really need your support and, 
And uh, Betty Yee, I heard her speak in December. She, she, she blew me away. I've never heard anybody speak and be able to, to uh, express so much and, and, uh, and convey so much information. And uh, she's really an amazing uh, speaker. So highly recommend if you, can, if you can join us. So thank you very much. Thank you, Gene. Um, so next up, we're going to have candidate open mic time. Uh, if you're a candidate looking to address the club from the general East County area within a few minutes of La Mesa, at least, um, please let me know now. Probably best to do it in chat and maybe even a private message because the hand raising thing doesn't really seem to work all that well. Um, you'll have two minutes to speak. I'll give you a one minute warning when you're halfway through and then I will ruthlessly mute you when you hit the two minute <laughs> mark. So uh, let's, 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 hear from, uh, let's hear from some candidates who wanna speak. All right. Um, All right, we've got um, Dan McMillan from Helix Water. So Dan, I'm gonna let you go first. You've got two minutes, Dan, go. Thank you. And uh, yeah, I've, uh, we're starting the campaign. Uh, I hope you've seen some of my signs. I'm running, I am a director of Helix Water. This year we have pushed, I have pushed for lower rates and we convinced the board this year, we had to use the pandemic uh, COVID-19 as a reason, but we did freeze rates. Uh, when I talk in front of groups, one of the main considerations is rates. And uh, I have been talking about that for years. We do not want to uh, price the public out of uh, water. And so we're very concerned about rates. If you have any questions on what's happening in East County in the water uh, sector, please feel free to call me or uh, email me. Uh, and like I say, my signs are up and I am running uh, for division one, which is sort of north of eight and between 125 and Greenfield. And again, uh, Helix was one of the two uh, agencies this year that did freeze their rates uh, in response to input from our constituents. One minute. Thank you. That's fine. All right, great. Even better. All right, so our next uh, is uh, William Dudley for Amar Kampanajar. So I'm gonna unmute you now, William. Okay. And you're up. I'm on? All right. You're on. Hi, this is the first meeting I've been to this club, although I did catch last week's meeting on YouTube, so that I padded your viewership stats there. That was very interesting. I'm volunteering for Amar Kampanajar. He's running for the CA50 district that's currently lacking representation, as most people probably know. He ran in 2018, and he almost won. Um, he was... Uh, Raina Very, he's been running kind of nonstop for the past three years or so. He was born in Hamuel, um, raised by a single mother. Uh, he actually worked for the Obama White House for a while. Uh, the district is about 30 Democratic, 40 Republican, 30 everything else. So he's running a, candid, um, a campaign that's appealing not just to Democrats, but he's also um, reaching out very hard to uh, to others, including Republicans, but I think he's still really running a strong campaign, emphasizing right, his one minute. Um, he was recently added to the DCCC Red to Blue list um, for flipping congressional candidates. So this is a chance to flip the uh, the district red. He's running a people powered campaign, and I'm just. It's the same stuff for asking everybody else, phone banking, texting, literature drops, is a people power campaign. And I can put down the email of the field director for people who wanna volunteer. Please do. Okay. All right, thank you very much. All right, next up, we're gonna have Liz Lavertu and I'm going to unmute Liz. All right, Liz, you're Thanks. 
Awesome. Hi, everyone. Uh, Liz Libertu, candidate for state assembly out here in East County in the 71st Assembly District. Uh, we have a really fun fundraiser coming up on Sunday. Uh, just head to my Facebook page, Elizabeth for Assembly, at four o'clock on Sunday and watch four candidates perform live a lip sync battle. We have Bernie Bregman, who is like the all star nighttime host of Comic Con, who's really popular, as well as Chad Michaels, who is. Um, the first winner of RuPa uh, RuPaul's Drag Show, who will be one of our guest judges. Um, it's gonna be a super fun night. Um, all the candidates are raising money uh, during that. So you will be the fourth judge, the candidate who gets the most individual contributions during the live performances, uh, wins the People's Choice Award. So I hope that you come join us so I can win that and all the money that goes um, to that event is gonna to go towards texting. Uh, so far we've texted, and to be One honest, minute. I haven't even looked in a few days, but so far we've texted probably close to like 25, 30,000 people. Um, but I just got an opportunity, um, not with the uh, PCCC Red to Blue, but another Red to Blue uh, organization who is willing to pick up the campaign and do all of our texting uh, for us. Uh, it's through through text, but they do all the volunteers and everything. And I only need about five thousand more dollars to uh, make that happen. Uh, the numbers are looking like we're getting a couple more percentages here and there. We're getting closer to, uh, you know, closing the gap, and uh, every dollar counts. So if you can donate to the campaign, that's great. If you want to volunteer, I need phone bankers. Uh, we phone bank uh, on Zoom every Sunday, but you can phone bank literally anytime from your house that you have available as well. So if you want to phone bank, please, I put my information in the chat. I'll do it again so you, it's fresh. Just text me or email me and somebody from my team will reach out to you. Um, we might, I mean, with the way things are going, the way Democrats are pushing everybody in East County with Amar, you know, up ballot and down ballot, we have a shot to flip a bunch of seats this year. So I hope that you guys can join with me uh, on Sunday and laugh with me or laugh at me and uh, throw a couple of dollars to the campaign. So thank you guys so much. Great, thank you, thank you. So do we have, uh, do we have any more candidates who wish to speak tonight, local candidates in particular? Going once, going twice, I guess not. All right, so I guess that's it for tonight's meeting. Thanks for staying with us and we hope to see you soon in real life. And for October, we're gonna be talking about logistics. We're gonna talk about how you can vote in this election and make sure your vote is counted. We're gonna tell you where your polling places are. We're gonna tell you how to collect ballots for other people and turn them in. You don't even need a stamp. And we're gonna have candidates, candidates, candidates telling you what you want to know about them. Uh, until the next meeting in October, the, which by the way is the first Wednesday in October, you can look for a replay of this meeting on our YouTube channel if the technology cooperates. Just search for the Mesa Foothills Democratic Club on YouTube and subscribe while you're there. Also look for links to the video on our website, Facebook page and Twitter account or in our email update. I hope to get the YouTube video posted publicly tomorrow and get that email out tomorrow to let you know. Um, the website is lamesafoothillsdemocraticclub.com, or if that's too much for you to type, lmfdems.com. The Facebook page is also the name of the club. On Twitter, we're lmfdems. And if you want to sign up for email updates, go to the website and look for the get email updates link at the top of the page. Uh, also hoping to put together a podcast pretty soon so you can listen to these meetings. Ooh, how exciting, a podcast coming soon, hopefully. Watch for an email on that. Um, so I wanna thank the board for their hard work arranging this meeting. If I sound at all intelligent here, the credit is theirs. And also thanks to our guests and candidates and to you. Good night, everybody. Stay healthy, stay sane and vote blue no matter who. Good night.